Hi, I'm Andrew Bissell. I'm CEO of Sunamp. I'd like to tell you about our company. Sunamp is based in Edinburgh and we're one of the world leaders in thermal energy storage. Uh, we employ about 50 people. We have a key R&D partnership with the University of Edinburgh and our UK R&D and manufacturing is just outside Edinburgh. Our thermal batteries are now launched. They're in serial production. Actually, we've exceeded 10,000 units delivered worldwide. And I think it's important just to focus on the problem we solve. The problem we solve is the 50%, roughly, of world final energy consumption that is denominated by heat in all its forms. Heat energy for cooling, for space heating, for process heat, for hot water. Across the board, heat energy is about 50% of global final energy consumption, a very significant amount, and it needs storage. I'd also like to introduce Bill Edrich. Bill is our global head of commercial and industrial. He'd be here doing this video today, but unfortunately he's on holiday. We store energy using phase change materials, materials that melt and freeze, and that gives us a huge advantage compared to sensible heat storage materials like hot water, where we're about three to four times better, or glycol in a cold store, where we're something like 10 times better in terms of energy density. And to achieve that, we've developed a, a materials breakthrough with the University of Edinburgh uh, around the stability side, and we've proven that we can do 40,000 cycles. Our performance is validated by RAL PCM uh, in Germany. We also deliver very high thermal power, which is fundamental to underpinning massive delivery rates for hot water, uh, rapid cooling in a blast chiller, and so on. And this is actually quite hard, but we underpin it by a very um, effective heat exchanger design. And we can support hundreds of kilowatt hours to multi megawatts. We're in production. The products are flexible and modular. The residential range, which you can see there, of which the most common size is the equivalent of a 210 litre hot water cylinder, are fundamentally much more compact, but also have much lower heat loss. We're around about a quarter to a half of the heat loss rate of a conventional product. They then range up into the bottom of the industrial and commercial range with our central bank mini. Palletized, it replaces about 2,000 litres of hot water storage or about 10,000 litres of cold glycol storage. And from there, we range further up to containerized products in 10 to 40 foot ISO containers with between one and 10 megawatt hour of storage. That can address multiple applications, refrigeration, cooling, hot water, space heat, process heat. Um, hopefully some of these will be useful to you. And there's even options to mobilize the storage and actually move it between locations where you have waste heat in one location and a need for heat in another. And we can fill with multiple different materials. You see a full range here the most common being from minus 30 all the way up to plus 118 degrees Celsius. But in fact, if your needs range wider than that, down to cryogenic temperatures or up to um, even temperatures required for uh, glass or cement or steel, talk to us because we're almost certainly developing what you need. And we have a very wide set of flexible applications. Time grid, AC, electricity, fixed, time of use, demand side responsive. And as you're sure you're aware, the grid in the UK is getting very low carbon and will fall according to the climate change targets to zero grams per kilowatt hour by 2050. So what a great vector for decarbonisation. And you can run that with heat pumps or chillers to provide heat or cool. You can combine the two to provide simultaneous heating and cooling into different stores filled with different materials and from that deliver cold and hot uh, at different times. Um, you can power it by solar thermal, by PVT um, or by PV. You can use wind behind the meter um, or in the grid. Uh, you can charge the stores using electric resistance heating. You can connect either direction to district heat or cooling networks. And of course, boilers, fuel cells or CHP are still accessible to use fossil fuels, hydrogen or biomass if those are appropriate to your application. 
Here's an example from the Wirral College, a combined heat and power using the capstone uh, micro turbines, um, themselves charging a number of electric batteries and also two Sunamp central bank mini thermal stores. The cross vector integration there resulted in energy cost reductions of 38 to 40% and site-wide carbon savings of 18%. That solution is in active use every day and therefore we are at technology readiness level 9. And here's another industrial example. Need three factories on one CHP plant and one low temperature hot water loop. But demand and production don't match perfectly and we're providing distributed storage. About two megawatt hours distributed across the site using the central bank mini. Multiple ways you can tuck it away in different corners, compact and easy to locate, um, pallet truck or forklift delivery, preheating process water from 12 to 50 Celsius. So we're reducing the cost of steam production and the calculated payback for that site eight to 12 months. And here's another example where a cooling network exists on a manufacturing site want to expand, don't want to dig up the cobbled yard, disrupt production with pipework expansion works, don't want to add extra central plant. So instead, 12 central bank minis distributed into various places, for example, parking spaces uh, or within small mechanical plant areas, able to discharge in aggregate 350 kilowatts, having a storage capacity of 350 kilowatt hours, charging up when the network is unloaded and discharging on demand. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm Andrew Bissell and Bill Edrich is also here available to take your emails and support you with your projects. Thanks very much.